Hi there, my name is Rick V. I'm an ENT surgeon working for the NHS in central London. And today I'm going to talk about another doctor I met in New York. Uh, you might have not seen the first video, which is a gentleman known as Dr. Kaka, who works in Manhattan, New York. And the, the background behind this is that just before Christmas, because of the junior doctor strikes and things like that, I had a little bit of time. I thought, why not go to America? Because we're just about to bring in the hypoglossal nerve stimulator. Hypoglossal nerve stimulator uh, this is used for obstructive sleep apnea, people who can't breathe properly at night because they snore so loudly and their airways get blocked and they can't breathe. Uh, and so this is a, uh, like a pacemaker. It sits in your chest and delivers uh, a stimulation to a nerve of your tongue. So instead of your tongue falling back and blocking your breathing, it gets pulled forward so you can breathe better so you don't get the sleep apnea. So it's a really good treatment for um certain specific individuals with obstructive sleep apnea. And the reason why I'm going to America and also going to Germany, and, and this is on top of all the training I've had before, is because for the since 2018, I've been trying to bring this uh, new device into the uh, NHS. And now finally, it's available for free. We've had a few implants come through already, but we're waiting for a new implant to be made available February to April time. I'm still waiting for the final date for that. So we should be able to provide this treatment for free on the NHS. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a little bit later. But um, whilst I was in America, I thought I would see a number of doctors to give me some more uh, to give me some more insight because obviously I get all the training from Inspire and, and the other training I've done from uh, Singapore and other places. But what I really want to do is speak to people who have done this for a long, long time. So Dr. Ahmed Mahmood, who works in New Jersey, um, Hackensack, I, I'm, I think that's the hospital, but I think he works in that whole area. Um, he is probably the guy who works most in sleep surgery in New Jersey area. So he was really kind. He let me come over to his hospital. Um, we had a long discussion about uh, hypercostal nerve stimulators. He let me watch some operations, which is really, really nice of him. Um, and we went through the different operative techniques. He, he talked mostly about different operation techniques and how to get the best result for patients, because he does so many. This is, this is, he's a bit like me, but in, in New Jersey. So we talked about, for example, different types of nerves. So uh, let me explain this. So there is a nerve called the hypoglossal nerve, which comes around here and then spreads out like a fan into your tongue. Now, some of these nerves pull your tongue forward, and those are the exact nerves we want. We want the nerve the nerve that we stimulate to pull the tongue forward. But some of these nerves pull the tongue back. And it's a matter of picking out the right nerves because you don't want to stimulate the ones that pull the tongue back because that's the exact opposite of what you need. Now, he explained to me that some of his um, colleagues who've been doing this for a long time accidentally pick up a certain nerve, which although it mainly helps pulling the tongue forward, some of these nerves pull the tongue back and they're very, very close together. So um, it's not seen in any of the literature. He's actually named it Nerve of Mahmood. And I, although I'm not sure why he named it Nerve of, uh, Nerve of Mahmood, but I quite like it and I hope it um, catches on after this video. But it's a nerve that's underneath those other nerves. And he ta taught me how to find it. And this is something that, you know, it's not, in, again, not in any of the textbook, not in any of the training, which I've had in the last sort of five years or so for this thing. So although I've been desperate to start this operation, it's actually on the face of it, quite an easy operation. Those little nuances, this little finesse of n learning from people who've done this lots and lots of times and getting those little tips and tricks are really, really helpful because I think that's how doctors should learn. They should go meet people who've done loads of them before they start their own practice. Because um, I think I said in this other video, um, UCL or the Royal, uh, the Royal National ENT Hospital, together with all the other sleep departments in the same hospital, uh, we're probably the largest, um, we definitely are the largest sleep centre in the whole of Europe. And uh, I think uh, in just my little um, department, the sleep ENT surgery side of it, I think we see up to about 100 patients a week. So it's a huge number of people that go through our doors. And then we've got the respiratory team with the CPAP masks. We've got the neurology team, the insomnia team. There's all the dental team, all sorts of people, a uh, huge influx of people. So I need to make sure that if I'm going to start this service, I want to make sure it's the best possible service around because, um, well, you see my channel. I, I'm, I get very cautious about things. I want to make sure that I've got the best information. I've done all the, the, the Inspire training, which they've asked me to do, but I, 
I want to do more. And and I think that was a good use of my time. Anyway, so I was seeing uh, uh, Dr. Mahmood and he went through different nerves and different techniques of uh, placement and how to uh, get the, the wire from here to here, all sorts of things. It was really, really useful. And I'm really happy that I had the opportunity to speak to him. And I do hope one day that I get to speak to him again and um, show him our, our department and hopefully he will learn something from me. Well, let's see. Um, now, unfortunately, whilst I was out in the, I think they call it the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey and some other places, that two of the operations I was meant to see actually got cancelled. So there were two days where I wasn't able to see these operations in the week I was there. So actually, I saw some other doctors there and that uh, is more about nasal obstruction because I thought since I'm here and I've got a day off, why not see some other doctors? So I'll be talking about that in the next video. So I'll see you there.